Hey guys, so as you would have seen if you've watched my last two vlogs, I spent a week traveling around the country trying to see as many shows as I could on Carrie Hope Fletcher's first solo UK tour called An Open Book. Now, during that vlog, I said that I wasn't going to review the show until I'd seen all the ones I had booked, which I have now done. It is now the 14th of June and the tour ended on the 11th. Altogether, I saw five shows, but I only vlogged the first four because when it came to Bath, which was separate, I just didn't have a chance to get my camera out. I filmed one clip, which was the bows, which I will put in this video, but other than that, there's nothing from Bath, but I will discuss it later on. I'm going to break this video up into little sections just to make it a little easier. They might overlap, we'll see. Uh, first, I'm just going to give you a little breakdown about the travel for the four, first four shows. Like I said, I've done two vlog who vlogs of that trip, so I'm not going to go into too much detail, but just a little bit of information. Then I'm going to tell you a bit more about concept. I might have mentioned it already in those videos, but just in case, I'm going to go into a bit more detail now. Give you a little breakdown of each show then, each venue I saw, um, like what the show was like, what the venue was like, and like things around it. Then... I want to, we'll then discuss the songs that went to each story. Like I said, I'm going to tell you the set list for each venue, but I'll just go based on what the story was called and I will reiterate what the actual songs were to the stories. Then, obviously, you know me, I always buy merch, so we'll have a little look at the merch that I bought. And finally, we'll do just my final thoughts on the sh tour as a whole. So yeah, let's get started. So yeah, let's uh, start off with travel. Like I said, I'm going to keep this as brief as I can and try and like breeze through it as quickly as possible because I vlogged it, I don't need to go into great details. So I did four tour dates back to back. So I did London, Clandidno, Salford and Birmingham. I then did do Bath, but that was like a week and a half later and was on its own. Uh, accommodation wise, I had a bit of a mix. Did a travel lodge in London, which I've stayed in before. Uh, did a boutique hotel in Clandidno, which was quite nice, and then just Premier Inns in Salford and Birmingham, and then Bath. I was home. In, I was home. It's only ninety minutes from where I live, which meant that I didn't have to book a hotel. I could have, and I nearly did, just because there was bad weather predicted, and I didn't know how I was going to feel driving. But I, I did end up just coming home. On to the actual travelling part of it, which was actually the hardest. Besides so sleeping in different beds pretty much every night. Um, yeah, all together I did three car journeys, one bus ride, two tube journeys and 11 train rides. And yeah, that was hard. Trying to make sure I get my connections was just stressful. Plus having to get my luggage on and off all these public transports was not fun. And it took me a good couple of days to recover afterwards. So if I was to do it again, I'd just go by car. One, it's less stressful, it, well I say less, it's still stressful but I don't have to worry about connections and I have a bit more control. I wouldn't have to lug my suitcase around and in some cases it would have been quicker. But yeah, like I said, I'm keeping this bit brief because I vlogged it. If you want to see more, like I said, go watch the two vlogs. But other than that, that was the travelling I did for this tour. So the concept of the show is pretty simple. One, it's more about how it was done that was unique. So the, the storyline, as it were, was it's the day before her first show. She hasn't got a set list. She's got writer's block. She's got all these people wanting information out of her that she can't give. And she ends up retreating into her own mind, which is where we are. So we're in a part of her mind that looks very much like an office that stores all her song lyrics and has all her stories. And obviously the audience there. Now, she asks the audience... For their help to come up with a set list and what story she has and that's what makes this show kind of unique so each night she does 15 songs and there are 15 stories to go with each song i say 15 there are technically um medleys so, so there's slightly more than 15 songs but 15 songs however out of those six are set so they'll be formed every night 
the other nine are audience voted and that's where this show got uh, very creative in the way it was done. So about a week before the tour started, QR codes were sent out on social media and I think they were sent by email, although I never saw one. And you would go take you to a website and you would, you know, say what venue you're going to and you get to pick a song. So you got a choice of seven for the first act, four would get performed and seven for the second act with five would get performed. Now, what made this unique, in a sense, other than that, is you didn't know what songs were going to be, because it didn't say what the songs were, it just gave you a story title. So, like I said, I'm going to put them up here, as you can see, you've got ones like Wonky Fable and Tale of Many Words and stuff like that, so you don't know what the song is actually going to be. Like some of them were kind of a little obvious, so there's one tale of many words, I figured it was going to be words, words, words from which of these switch, which which it was, that's a lot of W's in one sentence. Um, but like there were other ones like Family Fable, no idea what that song was going to be and it ended up being the McFly thing. I will go for what all the songs were but I'll do that a little later on in the video. But yeah, um, so each night you didn't know what you were going to get and I think even Carrie said she didn't really know. She had a rough idea what was going to be performed but wasn't entirely sure. Now how this manifested on stage was each song in theory had a book to go on a bookshelf. Now at the end she'd put all the books on the shelf and you'd spell something out because they were like parts of letters on the spines but each book had a unique location on the stage. So obviously if you go on multiple times like I was, you got to figure out which book meant which song. But yeah, so Carrie would then run around and try and find the books in the chaos of her mind and tell the story accordingly. Now, like I said, this was actually quite fun because I went five times. So by the time I got to the fifth venue, I knew, right, oh, that's going to be that story. Oh, that's going to be that story. So when I saw two books that I hadn't seen before, I knew I was getting the final two songs that I hadn't heard, which made me very excited. And yeah, the way it was done, like the setting, the props were really imaginative. I've not seen a show done like that and like fair play to like stage management and Carrie for knowing what books go away. I'm pretty sure I've seen like a set list, like print out. And I think he does give Carrie prompts as to where the books are for each story, but probably by the end of the tour she knew. Um, but yeah, that concept was uh, really funny, really tying in with Carrie and kind of brings out her personality as in like the chaos and the book loving and all that. But yeah, I'd like to see more shows done like that where there's like audience, like participation, I can't really say that word because it means a lot of people do go to multiple stops on tours, not just like theatre tours, just tours in general. And it'd be good to have like maybe just one song a night that gets voted for ahead of time. And it kind of made it fun as a repeat attender because I never knew what show I was gonna get each night and I did effectively get a different show every night. I say effectively, there were two nights where the set list was identical, but other than that, there was variety every night. At least one song would change. But yeah, like I said, concept wise, I can't fault it. It was really creative. And I think when it got announced, just for two people were like, oh, well, how is that gonna work? But it worked really, really well. Like I said, it was a very well oiled machine in regards to where the books were going and the band knowing what was coming next and like how the stories um, unfolded plus because some some were more happy songs, some were more emotional songs, that it actually changed the dynamic of the show every night. So I liked it, I really liked it, and people I've talked to thought it was done amazingly as well. Let's move on to the shows themselves. I'm gonna break it down into each individual venue, uh, what the venue was like, what the set was, and yeah, how the show went that night. Um, bear with me because I will have to look at my phone for this just to remind me what songs got performed each night just because, like I said, there were 21 songs technically done in total. There was only meant to be 20 but 
there was a bonus one in this first venue so we'll start with that so, so yeah let's start off with london uh like i said i need to look at my phone just to remind me of the songs uh the palladium i've been to before i've seen joseph there and once was also performed there i think i've seen something else but i can't remember what it was but palladium is where it is it's a pretty old show um old show Ugh older theatre but a very well popular theatre and every kind of musical theatre artist wants to perform there. Uh, Merch queue was the most hectic I've ever seen. Uh, it was actually like doubling back and stuff like three times and took up the entire bar area on the stalls. I don't know what it was like in like the Royal Circle and that but in the stalls it took up the entire bar area and it took me and my friend about 20 to 30 minutes to actually get to the front and get the merch we wanted which was chaotic and kind of made me glad that I was getting merch spread out over the tour and not everything in London because that would have just been hectic and I think people behind me would have got mad if I bought everything on the merch table but yeah like I was in the stalls I went to see the show with two friends we weren't sat together we were sat in different parts so my one friend was also in the stalls but on the other side and another one I think was in the royal circle so we just had like a group chat talking in the interval how the show was going and obviously met up after the show to talk as well so that was nice it was nice to like share that experience with um yeah to share that experience with people uh it was also nice i think and emotional for carrie because it was her home show and she did have quite a few friends and family in that night i know i seen a couple of her friends like theater friends in i saw her agent was in her family, so her parents, her brother and sister-in-law and her three nephews were all in the stalls, pretty close as well. And so that would have been like an emotional night for her. And I think that also played into one of the reasons that she didn't do stage door that night. Obviously she had a lot of friends and family in that night. But also stage door wise, she didn't do it because she'd, they'd actually been told by police they weren't allowed to do stage door. That was because when once was on back in March, I think, uh, the queues were chaotic. I think I might have a clip of it. If I do, I'll put it in. If not, it won't. But yeah, because stage door goes straight onto a main road, we were causing, the crowds were causing havoc. So the police actually said, you cannot do stage door because it is not safe. And that happened a couple of times on the tour. Not so much police involvement, but it was just deemed unsafe to do stage door. Uh, that only happened safety wise once to me but there were two nights you didn't do stage door but I'll get to the other one later on. Uh, set list wise uh, I should probably start off by talking about her opening act so she had a trio called the uh, called Trinity who are an Irish heritage band I'm gonna go with so one was Canadian Irish one was American Irish and one was Irish. Um, they did a mix so the first couple of songs were all like Irish culture kind of songs and then did some more popular songs so you had like the great showman um what was it from now on from a great showman um and then go the distance from hercules but then there were a lot more like irish songs so we did have danny boy but yeah they were really good really tight they were funny they had some jokes going and yeah their voices were insane so now we move on to the songs uh like i said before each song kind of had a book related to it so if I can I'll tell you where the book was hidden on the stage but I can't remember where every single book was there's some that are, they were kind of hidden in similar places so if I can remember where they were I'll tell you if not I won't but yeah like I said the way the set was worked out you had 15 songs total seven the first act seven in the sec eight in the second I keep going to say seven and it would be set song two voted for, set song, two voted for, set song and obviously the second act would be set, two votes, set, three votes and then ended on a set song. So yeah let's have a look at what we had in London. So first song was another chapter from the show Between the Lines and this was actually rewritten to fit in with Carrie's show so I think the MD got in touch with and worked with the actual creators of between the lines and they reworked the lyrics of the song to better fit Carrie's show. It was a really nice song, it was um, yeah it was a really good way to open the show and open the second act 
because she did a reprise when she walked back on stage for the second act. Next we had a voted for song, so this one was Saucy Scoop, which I believe was hidden on like a table by a lamp right next to what was her writing desk. I, if I can, I'll put a picture up and put an arrow to show you where it was, but it depends on whether I have a good enough picture of the set. Um, yeah, that one was just about a night out she had in London, third got, ended up with um, her kissing a stranger and that coming to backfire on her a couple of months later. Uh, next song was uh, a historical exclusive. Uh, I'm not going to go into more detail about that until I talk about the songs later on. Uh, next we had a set song, so she did a medley from... Les Mis, like Carrie said, Les Mis is her favourite show, she was in it I don't know how many times over the years, you know, it was her first show as a child, first show as an adult, it holds a special place in her heart, but she did two songs from it, like I said, a medley. One was Stars, which is sung by Gervais normally, like she said, she did, what was it, 959 shows in Eponine and she had to listen to this song 559 times while sat at the back of the set because of the way it worked so it's one that you know means a lot to her because of that memory so she did that and then went into on my own and it was fun each night because there would be like a delay in the crowd reaction when she did the switch so some people got it like that other people it took a couple of rounds for them to realize the song had changed so you'd suddenly hear like a <gasps> every night and obviously I knew by the end, by the time I got to Bath, I knew it was coming, but it was fun to see that crowd reaction each night. Next we had a bittersweet anecdote, very hard word for me to say. Um, that was hidden under a sweet jar, so she had a sweet jar on her desk and the book was underneath it. Uh, that was just about, I don't know how to explain the story for this one, but it was uh, something that happened to her as a child that has had an effect on her throughout her life. Uh, not to the, it's just a boy when she was 13 said something to her and there's the effect and the mindset it's creating her now as an adult. Uh, the final vote for song in Act 1 then was Family Fable. This obviously was going to be very popular because it meant she was going to be talking about her brother. The story she told was just him how he's not a very, he wasn't a very good cook as a teenager and he nearly set the house on fire cooking burgers. You know, it was very funny and like I said, Carrie's brother and the rest of the family were in that night. So you, people like more in the mid store said they could hear her nephews giggling at this story about their dad. So yeah, it was a funny story and like, I think it got performed a couple of nights on the tour because it was very popular. But yeah, it was, the delivery of it just made it, it was a very funny song song and story and I will go into what the song is but basically she did a McFly song for that one and the final song in act one was I Say No from Heathers um like she said that's a the story was she's got to originate a lot of roles over the years Veronica Soy in the UK being one of them and she got, was the first person to sing this song it was written while she was in the show so it's the story of it um, being put into the show, the nerves she had for the first time she performed it and how glad she was that she was lucky enough to be the one to originate that song. We'll now go into Act 2. So like I said, she comes back on stage singing almost to herself a reprise of another chapter before we go into the first fault song. So the first story was uh, just about like how when you're a teenager you're so busy trying to fit in and that kind of feeling and when you're older you kind of realize it's better to be who you are instead of trying to change to fit in and the song she did for that was I'd Rather Be Me from Mean Girls which I was really happy about because that's a song I kind of wanted to hear her sing because I'm intrigued to see how her voice would sound on it so I'm really glad it was one of the set songs on the tour and next we had the first voted for song and it was Teenage Obsession like I said I talked about the songs but it was just talking about the music she was obsessed with growing up and as a teenager. The next voted for song was A Love Story. Uh, this one's really sweet. It was very popular so I think it got performed every night 
because every knew it was going to be her talking about her husband. Now the story was very very short, almost nothing. She did tell it once but I'll get to that at another venue. But yeah, it was sweet. It was more about the song opposed to the story because like she said, if you knew her story as a whole, you followed her long enough, you knew what the story was. You didn't have to be told. Uh, the next set song then was Wherever He Ain't from Mac and Mabel. Uh, this was done in a way to like, so she could introduce her band. So she would introduce her band, say about, you know, how they were all uh, people she'd worked with before and she'd loved working with and she wanted to work with them on the show. But then, you know, she's been lucky enough to work with a lot of people that she loved working with, but then a lot of people that she wasn't so glad to win and then that led into the song so that was quite funny it's quite a fun upbeat song and quite enjoyable to watch Carrie perform it uh, next we had for London now this wasn't meant to be a voted for song but for London it was a bonus song so she had her friend Scott Page who she's known for years come on and they did a duet so they told a little story about their friendship like how they met together on Chitty they worked together on Adam's family and they're still like really good friends now and they did Timeless To Me from Hairspray, which is a very funny song, but it's, you know, it's normally sung by uh, Tracy's parents in Hairspray, but they worked into more of like a friendship thing than a husband-wife thing. But it was really funny, really upbeat, and the cheer Scott Page had when he came on, because everybody in that audience knew who he was. The cheer he got was, I think, one of the, almost one of the loudest of the night, apart from obviously the bows. But yeah, it was really nice to see Carrie do that, you know, bring somebody up and do a duet with them, especially at her home show. Next we have what was another very popular voted for song, which was A Tale As Old As Time. And no, it's not Beauty and the Beast. I think that's why everybody voted for it, because they thought it was going to be Beauty and the Beast, but it wasn't. It was just about, you know, how you change as you grow up. So the story was, there were songs when she was younger she would skip over and now you know they, they're songs that she loves and she actually takes to auditions for so and one of them was um i dreamed a dream from Lily miss which she's now gone on to play fontaine and sing that actually on west end stage so the irony of you know the importance of things when you get you know the importance what you think is important or boring as a kid how that changes as you grow up the last voted for song in this particular venue was Writer's Report. Um, I've had to kind of go back and try to remember what the story was but I'm not going to go into too much detail but it was just about a certain musical which is what the song they ends up getting sung is from and her love for it of when she discovered it and fell absolutely in love with it. So that's kind of the story. Like I said I'll go into a little bit more detail once I say what the songs are. And how the show ended. So at this point we've written the entire set She's discovered the script, she's happy, and she's realised, you know, she needs to come out of her mind. And, you know, if she can do an 18 date tour, there are maybe other things that she can do if she's willing to come out of her comfort zone. So she did uh, The Life I Never Led from Sister Act. And it was a really nice way to end the show, because like I said, start of the show she's like, can I do this? Have I put too much pressure on myself doing this tour? And, you know, she's been very open on social media at how nervous and anxious she was about doing this tour and how she she doesn't like going out of her comfort zone it makes her really anxious like I said but um yeah so ending on a song that's like well what could happen if I did go out of my comfort zone and do all the things that I haven't done you know what would my life be like so yeah it was a nice way to end it and then we went on to the bows but yeah it was um London was fun. I don't know if that was my favourite show of the, of the tour, but it was definitely a fun one, especially when you had that bonus song where Scott Page came on. So moving on to Clandidna, which was on May 27th. Uh, yeah, venue-wise, venue was interesting. Um, mainly because it didn't look like a theatre from the outside, and I was a little confused by where the actual entrance and that was. So I got up the day before and went to figure out where the venue was, wanted to figure out where stage door was going to be and all that. And yeah, from the outside, apart from the fact that it says the name View Cymru outside, you wouldn't actually know it was a theatre. 
and even like the foyer area doesn't really look that much like a typical theatre obviously once you get into the actual theatre it does uh, it's also a really nice venue because it's you know you come straight out and you're straight on the seafront and it's fairly modern I don't know when it was actually built but I'd say probably in the last decade or so song wise first act was pretty much the same was same as London but a few songs just switched places but it was the same song so we had another chapter to start then we had saucy scoop bit to sweet antidote uh, stars slash on my own historical exclusive family fable and then ended on I say no uh, like I said same as London um, one thing I didn't mention with the London one is though on I say no in the actual song there's a line where JD interrupts so because Carrie knows people in that audience are going to know the song she would actually encourage the audience to say that line which they all did in uh, gusto <laughs> So second act was where it actually changed. I ended up getting three new songs. So I actually completed all the potential songs for act two on the second venue. Uh, first, like I said, we started off uh, another chapter of Praise and I'd rather be me from Mean Girls. We then had the first new song, which was, the story was Revolutionary Yarn. Uh, like I said, I'm not gonna go into too details, but it was just about a showman she'd had and how it was like literally it happened and then it was over and it's never been spoken about since and that then went into the song which is kind of about uh like i said i'll talk about the song later on but yeah it fit in with the story quite well and the story was really fun and i think it might have been one of my favorite stories because like carrie said it was one of her secrets uh next vote for song was love story again like i said i think this got played at every venue then we had wherever he ain't uh, to introduce the band the next voted for song was tell us all this time again uh, which we had in London uh, the next two then were my two new song my final two new songs so we had uh, a cheerful whisper now this book was kept with one of the band members so Carrie would say oh I've given it to him to keep it one of my secrets I need it back now and yeah, it was just about how she, her view of like happiness and what love is at 20 has now changed. She's 30, so it's like how that changes. So what she thought love was then, now she knows what love actually is. So yeah, like I said, I'll go into the song later on. The next one was Authentic Moment. So this was her talking about the favourite role she ever plays. And she still maintains that it's her favourite. And it was just about how it came into being. Uh, like I said, once I explained the uh, song I might explain the story a bit more and obviously then we ended on uh, the night the life I never led so pretty similar to London like I said a lot of these venues are going to be the same because there was very few deviations but yeah London no was fun uh, it was the first time I actually did go to stage door and Carrie did it because the stage door actually emptied into a car park so it was fairly safe and the queue was quite big uh, it was quite nice as well because I got to speak to Carrie. I've spoken to her like a couple of times on stage before previously at previous shows. But yeah, I had a present for her. So I'd gone wandering around and didn't know that day. Ended up at the pier where there was a press penny. I've said this in the vlog. And I got press pennies for myself because I know she likes press penny. I got one for her and she got really excited when I gave her a press penny. And ended up giving me a hug. I didn't ask for it. She just, pro just gave me a hug and I just went with it. If you know me, I'm not big into hugging, especially people I'm not that don't know that well. But it was good. I enjoyed it, and I am trying to work on that like aspect of my uh, anxiety around social situations. Next, we move on to Salford. Now, Salford was good. Like my hotel was like a ten minute walk from the venue. Um, Food wise, it wasn't the easiest. It's the same for Clandidno, actually. Food wise, Clandidno wasn't the easiest either. Just because, although there's a shopping like mall there, it was kind of closed. Because it was a Sunday night, so it was on May 28th. A lot of them, they closed at 6, so of course the show's not till half 7. So it was trying to find food quick enough before anything closed down. 
But yeah, venue is nice. The Lowry is, I don't think it's a modern venue. I think it's been around for a while, but it's right on the docks. And it was actually a really nice venue. Um, it This was the only venue where I actually wasn't in the stalls. I was up on, I was in the circle. I don't think it was Grand Central, I think it was just called the circle. But I was on the front front row of the circle. So it was nice to be like a little higher up, but then you had the downside that you couldn't really guess where the books were. Um, set wise, I think if I'm not mistaken, that this set was identical to Clandid No, so I'm not gonna go through the songs. I'll go through them briefly. So once again, you might have songs just switch places, but the sets were pretty much the same. So act one, another chapter, saucy scoop, historical exclusive, fame is medley, Bittersweet Antidote, Family Fable, which I haven't mentioned in the last two where that book was. So Carrie had on like a coffee table, she had a picture of her and her brother when they were younger and it was under that. I just, like I said, I was going to try and tell you where the books were, but I kind of been forgetting to do that. But yeah, so like I said, Act 1, exactly the same. Act 2, uh, another chapter, Reprise. Uh, I'd rather be me from Mean Girls. Then we had Teenage Obsession, which we didn't have the night before but we had had in London. Uh, Cheerful Whisper which we'd had the night before. Then we had Wherever He Ain't once again because that's one of the set songs. Tell Us All The Ten which once again I think I'll pay to every show. Uh, Love Story once again every show. Authentic Moment and then The Life I Never Lived. So yeah that venue was good and once again stage door. It was also nice just before because because it fell on a Sunday, which happens to be her husband's day off, because he's currently in Hamilton. He was there, so I got to meet him very briefly. Like, literally say hi, how are you, kind of thing. Before the show, and then he was there at stage door. I think he was filming clips for Carrie's vlogs. But yeah, once again, did stage door, Carrie did stage door. She, as soon as she saw me, she's like, oh, hi, again, you're back. Uh, I had another present for her and her husband, which I'd gotten given the night before, but yeah, it was another fun one. And I lucked out because I think stage door was going to close about 15 minutes after I left because I could hear the security going back and say, oh, you know, you guys might be the last, last we might have to cut the queue here because, you know, Carrie's got to go on to the next venue. Because this set, like I said, she had three nights in a row and she was going from um, Clendenno to Salford to Birmingham, so had to allow enough time for the travelling. But yeah, set, like I said, same as Clan did know, songs I've heard already at this point. There was nothing new, but it was still really enjoyable, like I said. Um, one thing I haven't mentioned, which I will mention for this one, because Teenage Obsession came up. Uh, Teenage Obsession, afterwards, because she's doing a lot of running around, uh, she needs to take a, like a brief break, just catch her breath and drink water. So she has her band play what she's calling her drinking water song. And they literally improvise, they don't improvise, but they, they don't tell Carrie what it's going to be and they change it every night. So uh, I think we had Mamma Mia that night. So it was really, uh, it always made it funny. And when it came to Bath and I was still voting, I voted for Tina Obsession just so I could get the water song, which I'm really glad to. But I'll talk about that when we get to Bath. Yeah, I think that was that's it song-wise for Salford, looking at it. Like I said, it was a fun night. I enjoyed it. Um, but kind of stressful because obviously that was the one day where I didn't get a rest because I literally had to get back to the hotel, pack, ready to leave the next day. So it would have been nice to have a little bit of downtime in between. So I have no idea how Carrie did the tour. So next up we have Birmingham. Uh, Birmingham was a nice venue. It was, I think it might have actually been the biggest venue on Carrie's tour, I'm not entirely sure. I remember her putting on her social media the day after that she was a little disappointed that she wasn't doing it in uh, the theatre she formed in previously, but she thought, oh, you know, there's no way I'm going to sell out like a thousand seats anyway. She thought the simple hall was going to be smaller it wouldn't it's actually bigger and she did sell it out um the one thing i'd say not about the venue the venue was fine once again merch was insane for that venue but um it's not very you have to know the venue then so 
I'll talk about it a little later on about stage door what I mean about that. But yeah, the venue itself, seating was fine. And it's a really nice like acoustic venue. So because it's built more for orchestra performances, the music actually carried really well. Um, there was a slight issue in the second act, but I'll get to the, well, I might as well talk about it. I talked about it in the vlog, but uh, audience member became an ill during the song. It was right towards the end of the show as well. So, you know, I really feel sorry for her. So they ended up having a show stop just so they could get the woman out safely and to be seen to. She was conscious and all that. I think she might have just fainted or something briefly. I don't know the whole story and I know she's fine now but yeah for safety reasons they had to do a show stop just to allow this woman to have medical attention but yeah uh, set wise once again act one another chapter we've said this uh voted for song first voted for song was saucy scoop again then we had another new song so this one was an icy story. Now this one, like I said, I don't think it came up that many times on the tour. I've known it came up, I think it came up with one more venue. But yeah, I think everyone thought it was going to be Let It Go from Frozen. It wasn't. Uh, I will, it was a Frozen song but it was a different one. And like I said, I'll talk about it after. But the story was kind of how social media plays with our minds a little bit. So how Carrie can say something and how people can misconstrue it and make her out to be a villain even if she's not, so it's kind of along that self-doubt, self I can't speak, self-doubt kind of um, thing of am I a bad person or am I not? Which the story, the song actually tied in quite well with. Like I said, next set song, Lame is Medley. We then had um, Bittersweet Antidote and Family Fable again, and then obviously I Say No. And like I said, those songs were fun in that acoustic because they actually carried really well and especially when the audience participated in I Say No. Second act, I think it might have been identical to the last ones, I'm not entirely sure. There was, Like I said, I completed all the songs the second act so I'm not going to get anything new now. So, reprise of another chapter, I'd rather be me, Teenage Obsession, uh, Cheerful Whisper, Wherever He Ain't. Tales all this time, love story, authentic moment again. I think that was quite a popular one once people knew what it was. And then the life I never led. Uh, like I said, so story wise, one new one that venue. So by the time I came out of that, I only had two songs left to hear, which I actually said to carry. Um, but yeah, like I said, uh, beginning of this little section, uh, the layout. Of the symphony hall was a little confusing so everyone wanted to go stage door as they do so a queue started forming security said oh you know you need to move over to make space make it safe and all that but what they didn't tell us like that's not stage door stage door was actually outside um so yeah the venue is kind of like it's like a shopping center kind of thing but you, that's where the entrance to the venue is but yeah it was chaos so then there was like a mass exodus of every running to get from that position to where the actual stage door was and they played to Carrie she stayed there all night and went to the very last person as far as I know I wasn't at the very back I think I was somewhere in the middle um like I said I at this point Carrie had seen me three nights in a row so she knew who I was and she's like right what are you here what are you here where, where, where are we at now what what do we need to get so we discussed it and she said right I'll try and make sure try and work one of those into the bath show because it's bath you're coming to isn't it so it was kind of a nice thing because as the tour progressed obviously I was getting to talk to Carrie more and she was getting to know my journey on her tour then so finally we move on to bath um this was separate for two reasons. One was just time and I could only get a week off work so I wouldn't have been able to do additional dates. But also Bath was one of the added dates. So when the tour originally announced, I think there was only maybe 12 venues, but then a couple of months later they added um, six more. So I'd already booked the other four and then Bath came up and I was like, well, you know, it's close enough to home, it's close as I'm gonna get. And I won't have to stay in accommodation, I can come back straight after the event the show's over so though why not now originally I was going to get the train but because of like railway works and like bus replacements I decided just to drive 
it wasn't a bad drive like i said it took me about 90 minutes to get there parking was fine it was a bit of a rush like i said i didn't vlog that day because i was babysitting my niece and nephew beforehand and then went straight from the, my sisters drove to bath then had to find somebody to get changed which was really difficult i ended up getting changed in a random marks and spencer's cafe toilet and then you know find food and go to the venue the venue I will critique a little bit it's an older venue I could do with updating in the sense that you can tell it's been around for a good couple of decades and the reason I say it could do its infrastructure could do a little bit of updating like don't get me wrong I haven't got any disabilities or additional needs but there were a few people who were in wheelchairs or had walking sticks or on crutches and I found from what I observed they helped was very minimal they must have been lifts somewhere because i know somebody was up on like one of the upper levels in a wheelchair but in the stalls there was no wheelchair seating so there was a girl across the aisle from me who was in a wheelchair she had to transfer from her wheelchair into the aisle seat and there was no help like in other venues they normally a staff member will accompany them they, and then they'll take the wheelchair and bring it back to them but with this it was like well, we'll tell you, we'll point to where you gotta go and your friend can move your wheelchair for you. So I was really like disappointed in that. I think that's something they need to work on. And I don't fully understand why there isn't wheelchair spaces because the first four rows are all just like normal chairs which you can move. So potentially they could have just taken out a section of that and had that as a wheelchair location. So something that could definitely be improved on. The venue itself is nice, like I said, it's an old venue, the old venues are nice, but the, I think it needs a little update in there. I don't think it was prepared for the, like, the kind of show that carries was in regards to the draw. Song-wise, uh, I've actually completed the set at this venue, so I had two songs left to hear, and they were both in Act 1 at Bath. And I knew as soon as I got to my seat that I was going to be getting them. Like I said, each song had a book that would be in a unique location. So as soon as I got there, I could see she had this giant photo of her cat Edgar on an easel. The photo had been tilted and there'd been a pic uh, book put on the easel. So I was like, oh, that, might, I haven't, that definitely hasn't been seen before. Oh, I wonder if it's going to be this song. There was also one propped up on a phone, which I also hadn't seen before. So I was like, oh, I wonder if that's going to be that song. And I was writing both counts, so I got the final two songs that I hadn't heard before, so I completed the set. Um, so, as to what the songs were, uh, we had another chapter, once again, like I said, it's the same every venue. We had Saucy Scoop, which was a very popular song on tour. We then had the first new song of the two I hadn't heard, which was Tale of Many Words. And the story was just basically Carrie likes to talk, and it's how she likes to talk, and there's not enough like she can't get her words out quick enough and she'll talk about anything kind of thing and the song tied in very well with that and my prediction for what the song was was correct next we had you know the lame is medley again we then had the final song that i hadn't heard which was wonky fable this was about how although we were in the part the nice part of carrie's brain so we're uh, happy memories and all that are there's another part of her brain that's more anxiety related and she was talking about like how that would affect her during a show like am I going to forget my lines is somebody going to leave unhappy kind of thing but how she deals with that is by making fun of like those voices negative voices in her head and the song was actually really fun and I wish it'd come up in more venues uh we then had a bit of sweet anecdote I don't know why the song kept coming up I think somebody people were expecting a different story but the song was great and it is definitely an enjoyable song but the story yeah not so much like i said i'll talk about that a little later on and then obviously ended on i say no act two uh we had once again another chapter reprise rather be me from mean girls teenage obsession now this one i'm gonna link back to so like i said before uh after she does teenage obsession she needs to take a brief break just to make sure she takes on water and has to catch her breath so she has her band play stalling music or a drinking water song and the one they played in bath was hilarious and cheered everybody in the audience up so 
I call it the birdie song, but it's also the chicken song, the bird song, the bird dance, the chicken dance. It's got various names. But yeah, as soon as it came in, the audience were joining in. Carrie was in stitches on stage laughing to this song. And yeah, it was a really fun moment and everyone had a giggle over it. Uh, we then went into Cheerful Whisper as an next voted for song. Wherever he ain't, it was again another fun song. Uh, Tell us all the time, which I, I like. I said I came up, that came up at every venue. As did Love Story, which was next. So Carrie was definitely very emotional by the time she got to Love Story because doing those two songs back to back, they're both emotional songs. So it wreaked havoc. We then had a fun song to end on. So the last vote song for song was a revolutionary tale, which I discussed before. It's a tale of a showman she had, and it's very fun and got the audience laughing. It's a fun story. And then ended on The Life I Never Led. So yeah, that show was fun. And like I said, I didn't stage door that night. Two reasons. One, I need to get back home. But also, Carrie tweeted out early in the day, as I suspected, she wasn't going to do stage door because she had to get from there to, uh, to Glasgow for a last show, which was the next day. So, you know, that's a very long drive to get from one end of the country to the other. So there was no way she could do stage door if she was going to make it in time. So yeah, it's a little sad that I didn't get to do stage door bath, but I totally understand why. Uh, yeah, overall, songs were fun, sets were fun, and I did enjoy each venue. Uh, like I said, there were some venues I've been to before, well, one venue I've been to before, venues that could have done with improvements. But overall, venues were great, and the shows and songs tied in really like the songs and the stories tied in really well together in some cases I enjoyed the story more than the song other times it was the songs over the stories but yeah overall great set so now let's actually discuss what the songs were I was only saying what the story names were when I was going through the venue set lists but I'll now actually tell you what the songs were for each story and like I said, it was kind of a mix. Sometimes it was the story I've heard of the song, other times it was the song of the story. But in either case, they tied in very well. Each song went very well with what the story was, or at least the theme of the story. So, um, like I said, you had six set songs. So, another chapter from Between the Lines. We had the Les Mis melody, which was Stars and On My Own. We had I Say No from Heathers. We had Rather Be Me from Mean Girls. Wherever you ate from Mac and Mabel, and then The Life I Never Led from Sister Act. Now let's move on to the um, voted for songs. So we'll do the Act 1 one first and then Act 2. So first one potential story was Icy Story. This ended up being Monster from Frozen. I think it didn't get voted for that much on tour from what I can see. Because I think everyone thought it was just going to be Let It Go and they didn't really want to hear it. But I think if they knew it was Monster, it might have been a different story. But yeah, like I said, the story was just how social media can make you question yourself whether you're a good person or not and can sometimes make you out to be a monster. So having Monster from Frozen was very appropriate. Next we had uh, Family Fiction. Like I said, this was her telling a story about her brother, an embarrassing story about her brother. And she did what she said is her favourite McFly song, which is called Bubble Wrap. And yeah, it was nice in the London one because obviously her brother was in and he didn't know she was going to do that. So that was a nice little thing and it was a nice little nod to her brother. Next we had Wonky Fable. This was a song called Screw Loose from Cry Baby. And yeah, it's a very fun song. It's just kind of like someone poking fun of themselves, which like Kara said in her story, it was, that's how she gets over like those voice, negative voices in the head. She just pokes fun at them. So what Wonky having um, Screw Loose was very appropriate. Uh, Bittersweet Anecdote was pretty funny from Dogfight. Like, the story was she got a guy broke up with her when she was 13 and he was kind of the way he did it he said well you're just not pretty enough. And it's then that self thing of like body image and that and you know how she says now you know it's not the first thing she says if somebody criticizes is how she looks like well Yes, but my face that you don't like is on that, you know, um, is under my name on that theatre. Or have you read one of my nine books? You know, there's more to her than how she looks. And yeah, I think Pretty Funny was, yeah, it was a nice song. Like I said, 
story was okay, I didn't mind the story, but the song was what made that combination. Next we have Tale of, of Many Words. Like I said, I thought it was going to be words, words, words from Witches of East Switch, which it was. So I'm surprised it didn't get voted for more because I, I think that was one of the obvious ones. But yeah, it was a good song. It's a fun song. I heard it. I saw the show when he was in concert last year. So I'm glad it was put in the tour and it's definitely a difficult song because obviously it speeds, the tempo speeds up as she goes along. So the fact that she managed to get it all out was very impressive. Uh, next one is a historical exclusive. Uh, this was about treason. So the story was just about how Carrie's been lucky enough to workshop shows and then see them go on. And that's what treason is. She workshop treason and then she did do the concerts last summer. So she did The Inevitable, which is a really good song. And yeah, I was glad. I didn't quite know what if it was going to be that song, I, but I'm glad it was. The final one was was Saucy Scoop. And that was, like I said, she's gone a night out, ended up with a kiss and a stranger that came to backfire on her a couple of months later. And as she feeds into the song, it's, well, there are worse things I can do, which ended up being worse things that, there are worse things I can do from Greece, which, yeah, it was a nice, th once again, that was one of the songs that I would be intrigued to hear Carrie sing, so, like, her voice, and, yeah, I enjoyed it, and like I said, it was a very popular song on the tour, I got voted for for most, nearly every night, I think. So next up we have Act Two, so the first song is Cheerful Whisper, which was Secret to Happiness from Daddy Longlegs. Like I said, the story was how her views on, like, life and love have changed since she was 20 to now she's 30 and yeah it's kind of like, like she's figured out what the secret to being happy is for her anyway so yeah it was a nice tie-in to the story next we had Taylor of as all this time now this got picked for every venue and I think because a lot of people thought it was going to be Beauty and the Beast I thought that was going to be a bit obvious but I was intrigued to know what song was going to get picked and it ended up being uh, age and not believing from bed nods and broomsticks so the story was like I said um, there were songs when Carrie was younger that she didn't like she'd skip over to get to the better bits and now those songs that she skipped are in her repertoire and she does aud auditions and has even gone on to play those roles so she said you know it's appropriate for that song to be in there because it's like how you're you know when you're younger you get to a certain age and you're you're starting to doubt and your your opinions start to change so it was a very nice song but it's a very emotional song about being reaching that age where you stop believing in like fairy tales but you also start having that doubts about yourself so it's a, it's a nice sweet song and i'm glad i got to hear it every single venue i kind of like i don't know i wish we would add some other songs over it now and again but it was a nice it was one of those songs that it is nice enough that you don't mind Hey guys, so as you can see, a slight change of scenery. The reason for that is I was actually editing this video and realised that I'd forgotten to mention one of the songs. So the one song I didn't mention was uh, Authentic Moment. Now, Authentic Moment was the song Pulled from Adam's Family. Uh, the story was just how in 2014, uh, Andrew Lippo was put on a concert and her agent had put her forward to sing in it. He said, right, give, give her Pulled from Adam's Family. When she found out there was a musical for Adam's Ham, she became obsessed with it. Uh, after the concert, Andrew said to her, oh, if I ever bring the show to the UK, I want you to be my Wednesday. Now, like she said, she didn't take it seriously. She just thought, you know, boosting her ego kind of thing. Fast forward two years later, she's in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang on tour. The producer comes in and said, oh, we've got the rights for Adam's family. However, Adam, Andrew Lipper has said, we need to in, um, audition you first for Wednesday. So are you free next week? So yeah, she said that's a very rare moment where somebody actually sticks to a word and the fact that he remembered her and wanted her to audition. So yeah, and like, Pulled is a great song. I never got to see Adam's family while she was in it, so I'm glad I actually got to see her perform it. So yeah, let's go back to Pass Me and carry on with the rest of the songs. So next up we have a Love Story. This was a song called Someone Who Loves Me by Sarah Brellis, I think her name is. Um, so it's not a, um, 
it's not from a musical it was just she's a musical theater actress and this was one of her songs and like i said the story was just her talking about her husband joel and she didn't really say the story it was just along the lines of if you, this is my most recent story and if you follow me long enough you know what it's about but she didn't tell the story but in Birmingham because we'd had a show stop during that song so she had to redo it she did go back and actually tell the full story and it was just along the line in 2014 a girl met the lover of her life at the stage door of the Apollo but didn't realize until 2022 when she met him again at the stage door of the Wimbledon Theatre so everyone knew it was about Joel knew what it was going to be about their relationship but it was a very sweet one and the song's very sweet about you know finding someone who loves you like next up we have revolutionary yarn uh like i said this was about a showmance and the song was a moment in the woods from into the woods and i've not seen into the woods but you can get the things from the song which was i think the baker's wife has kissed the prince and it's like oh well that was quite nice but what happened always oh, gotta be these woods kind of thing so it was kind of it tied in with the story because, as Carrie said, she shared a like, backstage kiss with a cast member. They literally never talked about it and nothing came from it and they never spoke of her again. So it's kind of like, what just happened kind of thing, which was the theme of the song. Next we have Teen Noob's Obsession. This was a never, never um, medley. And teen Carrie's musical Teenage Obsession was My Chemical Romance. Uh, so she did a medley of Thanks for the Memories and then I'm Not Okay. And it was funny to watch because she was like singing into a hairbrush. She bought a hoodie that she'd had when she was younger. She was like rocking out on stage and going like full on teenage dramatic dance routines to these songs. So it was really fun to watch. And like she said, <laughs> she dreads every night and she needs a good drink of water afterwards but it's a fun one uh next up we had then finally we had a writer's report uh this was watch what happens from newsies so the story was just how carrie was home one day ill from school and saw newsies came on the tv so she ended up watching it and falling in love with the show so it was kind of that was the story more or less and going into the song but yeah um and obviously we had the bonus, and then obviously we had the bonus song of Timeless to Me from he um, Hairspray, which she did with her friend Scott Page, but that was only performed in London. So I think I picked the right venues to go to. But yeah, overall, songs tied in very well with the stories. The stories were fun, the songs were fun. Like I said, I sometimes I picked song over story, sometimes it was story over song, but Overall, a great pick of songs for the set. So next up we have the merch. Like I said, I always buy merch when I go to a show. Even if it's just a programme or a pin badge, I'm going to buy something. And being so I was seeing the show five times, I did end up buying everything on the merch table. I hadn't planned to, it just kind of happened. But yeah, so I'm going to show you what we got. Uh, pricing wise it was kind of expensive and it did vary a little so in the Playdom me and my friends discovered that it was actually more expensive in the Playdom than it was the other venues so I did rack up a lot of money spending buying merch but I'm glad I didn't buy I'm glad I the merch that was more expensive I'm glad I bought at the other venues and not at London so yeah let's have a look at what I got so first up we have a nice little tote bag it says Carrie Fletcher, an open book to her. It's a nice uh, emerald green with gold. You can't really see it, I don't think, but it's like gold glittery right in. Uh, this was kind of the colour scheme for the tour. So it was emerald green, gold, and then black. So everything is those three colours. But yeah, I bought this just because I was buying, I knew I was going to be buying programmes and I wanted something just to store them in as I was travelling around. So I got this one in Clan Did Know. But I kind of wish I'd got it while I was in London. But there we go. I got it in the end. Next up, like I said, I like a pin badge. It's a simple little merch thing. So I've got a little pin badge. It just says Carrie Hope Fletcher on it. So nothing... Oh, I don't know if that's going to focus. Yeah, so next up, 
we have a uh, pin badge that just just carry out Fletcher it doesn't say anything else on it so I don't think that's one I'd necessarily wear because this is kind of a random thing but I'm glad I bought it it's a simple little token and it was one of the cheaper options on the merch table uh, one of the other cheaper options was a fridge magnet so it's just kind of the going to focus on my face so yeah it's just kind of the graphics for the tour with you know carry hope fletcher an open book tour and then 2023 so that was kind of like what the poster for the tour was so it was nice to have a little magnet and like i said i was i didn't mention this i not properly so i'll mention it now i bought a little panda that i've now nicknamed bit called billy who i was taking around with me so it was nice to have something small that i could take a picture of him with Random I know, but I'm weird like that. Next up we have uh, the water bottle. So a nice black water bottle, once again, carry up Fletcher, an open book tour, and then concert tour 2023. Uh, screw top, nice little handle so you can carry it. Um, this t I didn't really end up with two of these because I bought this and it, can't, it comes in like a white box. You don't actually see this, you just get the box. And for some reason I thought it was the emerald green color. So when I got to a later venue and I saw it was black. I was like, oh, have I got have I got the black one or have I got an emerald green one? So I didn't buy it, the other one, thankfully. But yeah, I kind of confused it. Now, don't remember, I don't need any more water bottles, but some of my water bottles are coming to the end of their lives, so it's nice to have another one. How long that's gonna last, I don't know, especially with the writing, but we'll see. It will get used eventually. Uh, next up, uh, if you've watched my <laughs> channel long enough you know when i go to shows i end up buying mugs so the fact there was a mug on the merch table i was gonna get it so yep yeah, nice emerald green mug once again same as the others harry ho fletcher an open book tour then on the back uk tour 2023 and yeah just standard mug i do technically have two of these because i'm paranoid that if i do end up using it, it gets broke i wanted a second one as a backup but yeah, nice little mug. Like I said, I collect when I go to theatre. I collect mugs because they're um, an easy enough trinket and it's a nice thing to look in and drink out of it eventually. They're practical. Uh, next up, we have a t-shirt. I wasn't going to buy this originally. I saw it I was like I don't need a t-shirt. I'm not gonna. I'm never gonna wear it. So I left it. But then when I got to Birmingham, which was the last of the four nights, I was like no i'm gonna get it i'm gonna get it so once again glitter writing on the front carry Hill fletcher open book tour then on the back standard like band t-shirt it lists all the tour dates so yeah i'm kind of glad i got it because it like i said it lists all the tour dates so it's nice for me to look and say like, oh well i went to that one and i went to that one and i went to that one and because i did do four tour dates it is quite nice i haven't actually tried this on yet but i went for a medium and I just hope that fits. If it's too baggy, then uh, I can always sleep in it. Uh, the next piece of merch I actually can't show you because I don't have it. Um, one of the other things that were on the merch table and is actually the most expensive thing on it was a hoodie. Very similar to the t-shirt. Uh, it came in two colours. You either had the black like the t-shirt or the emerald green colour. I went for the emerald green. But by the time they got to London, which was only the fifth tour date, they were actually running out of the green they only had you left in like a couple in the two in two sizes and i don't think they were running that many in the black either so i know they did a reorder for later on the tour but i i was like once again same with the t-shirt i don't need a hoodie i don't need it and then as as i was going through the venues like no i really do like that hoodie it's a really nice color so i went on the website they've released a website with merch on not all the merch but the majority of it so I went on and ordered it. It still hasn't arrived. It says it can take up to about four weeks. So yeah, I would show it to you, but I'm just going to put a picture here just so you can see what it looks like. It's the same as t-shirt, carry on Fletcher on open book tour and then the tour dates on the back. But yeah, it's a very nice hoodie and I can't give you any more information about it because like I said, I don't actually physically have it. So the final piece of merch I bought, which once again is a piece of merch I buy at every show I ever see, which is standard program. Uh, obviously in normal programs they list like the songs it's a little hard to do on a show when you don't know what the set list is going to be but yeah I ended up with six of these uh, I'd always initially planned to get one at each venue and get it to sign 
but what I did because there are pictures like this so like this is my one of them and obviously it's signed uh, there are six of those kind of pictures so there's like one there there's another one there another one but there so because there were six in total I thought oh, well I'll get one I'll get character sign on a different page for each venue and then I, uh, at Birmingham I bought two programs and got it to sign um, in two different places just so I could have the complete set sadly I don't have the complete set because she didn't do stage door bath so it meant I didn't get the one signed I did kind of preempt it and went for the six the one that photo I like the least it's a good photo but I like the least I thought that's one I'll leave for Bath just in case she doesn't stage door which she didn't but yeah program like I said most programs they list the cast the creatives they list what the background of the story is and what the set list and like what the song list is going to be can't do that on this tour so first page as soon as you open you've got like pictures from Carrie growing up and shows she's been in and a little message of her, like, discussion of how the show came into being. We then have the page, the QR code for the voting. Don't know if the QR code still works, but obviously, yeah, uh, the show's over now, so it shouldn't. Uh, Carrie's standard, like, ent progr um, program entry, so, like, about her work history. So what shows she's been in, what books she's written, that kind of thing. Uh, we then have a page there on Trinity, which is her opening act. A um, bit more information about her director, her MD, uh, members of her band, what shows they'd been in. Uh, information about the production company, who's helping her put the show on. Tour dates, uh, where else have we got into here? Uh, the centre page is the merch, once again it doesn't show all the merch because it doesn't show the water bottle. And all that merch is still available on the website, actually. I think the magnet is sold out, but everything else, when I looked this morning, is still in stock. A um, bit more information about, like, her tour manager, light, you know, lighting, sound, stage management. Um, advertisements for other shows the production company is going to do. And then we have a little message here, and it says at the top, I don't know if it's going to be the right way around, read after the show and it's just kind of like a thank you for coming to her show and then the back page you've got standardised like cast poster for a show so obviously Carrie's going to be in it but like listing like who her director is, her tour manager, her agents, production company, her opening act and then some more like photos from Carrie's like growing up and show she's been. So yeah like I said I'm gonna my blank one which I haven't got signed I'm going to take next time I see Carrie in a show, which is actually next month, and see if she'll sign it then, just so I can complete the set. But when I... So another thing I didn't mention when I started this video, who knows how long ago now, was I was going to do like a highlights thing. I've kind of done it throughout, but I think highlights, like individual highlights was the drinking water song because like I said it was different every night you didn't know what to expect Carrie didn't know what to expect so it just ended up being quite funny watching her reaction watching the crowd's reaction it was fun especially in Bath when they did um, the birdie song uh, other highlights is watching Carrie somewhat improvise because there'd be things where she'd like fluff lines and she'd just make a joke about it so that was fun um, it was also getting to see as a whole, it was getting to see Carrie's personality a bit more. Like she said, she's always behind a character, so you get to see the character, but you don't get to see her. So hearing her like telling the stories and the mannerisms she brought out while she was doing songs kind of showed more of her, like what her humour is kind of like, which was fun to watch, as was like her interacting with the crowds, because she would, um, yeah, she interacted with the crowds a lot, which made it more... Um, not relatable, but I want to say more interactive, but that's kind of stupid one. But she interacted, interacted with the crowds that made it more immersive. That's the word I'm looking for. So yeah, I don't think there's any particular moments to stand out. Like I said, the drinking song in Bath was fun. Scott Page coming on in the Palladium was fun. 
there was a moment I caught in the Lowry, which, like I said, her husband was in that night, and I'm pretty sure he was in the stage wings. And, um, <coughs> yeah, she, you could see her, she was looking and smiling at him before she started the love story song, so that was sweet. And mostly it's just carried interaction, it was fun. I enjoyed like, not knowing what I was gonna, song I was going to get every night, or playing, like, hunt the books. Like I said, I knew where a lot of the books were by the end of the tour. So I could say, all right, we're going to get that tonight, we're going to get that tonight. So that was fun. There was the odd book where the two books were put in the same place that threw me. But other than that, it was a fun game to play. Like I said, one of the, my weird highlights was the fact that there was a book to each song. So it made it fun as, as the tour went on to try and think, oh, well, I know that's going to be that song. I know that's going to be that song. So that was fun. And like I said at the end, um, beginning, each book had like parts of letters written on the spine. So when she rearranged them at the end of the show, so as she's doing The Life I Never Let, she's putting the books on the bookshelf and they actually spell out next chapter. So, you know, the if ties in with the book theme, so the tour is called An Open Book, the first song is another chapter. So the fact that it went next chapter was quite a nice little... Um, tie into the show and a nice way to end it. Other than that, I don't think there was any particular like standout highlights. Like I couldn't necessarily say what my favourite song is or my favourite story because as I was discussing with another audience member, it tended to be the set ones I liked, but I liked the story some more in some of the voted for. So it was kind of like even uh, across the board as to what I enjoyed. Like I enjoyed all of it, some more than others, don't get me wrong. But overall, it was a great set and well done to like Carrie and her creatives for putting on that show because it was enjoyed. I've not heard anybody complain about that show. Right, and I guess now it's time to wrap up this very long video. I don't even know how long it's going to be, but I know I've been filming for nearly three hours at this point. So I'm expecting it's going to be a long time editing. But yeah, I just wanted to give my like closing thoughts on the show a little bit. Uh, first question I've got to uh, ask myself is, would I do it again? Would I go to multiple shows? Yes. I don't even have to think about it. Yes, I would. And like thinking back over the tour dates, I could have actually gone to more. There were about four more that I could have found a way to go to without even having to like take time off work. But I didn't for varying reasons. One. I think Bradford I didn't go to because I just didn't think about it. Uh, Sheffield I did heavily debate about, but there was going to be a rail strike the next day which would affect me getting home. Um, Leicester and Milton Keynes, once again heavily debated about it, but it came down more to financial because I justify going to see those shows and staying in the hotels and the travel costs again. And ultimately I just didn't think it was, not that I didn't think it was worth it, but I just couldn't justify it. I also would have planned it better and booked off for the last night, so I would have gone up to Glasgow and seen the closing night, just because I knew that would be an emotional night. And I wish I'd seen it. One of my, like I said, one of the friends I went to the London show with was at the Glasgow one, and she said it was a really good show. So I kind of wish I had found a way to do it, but yeah. Like I said, if Carrie does a tour, like, this again I will definitely go and I'll definitely try to do multiple dates the only change I would make is I wouldn't do transport I would drive um only because like I said lugging luggage around on like 11 trains did me in physically and mentally so I'd rather drive at least my I'm only lifting hotel to car that's it and um, it's less stress on my body mentally it might still be stressful but at least physically a little less stressful but yeah that's a roundup of my uh, thoughts I'm gonna make this very quick because my camera battery started flashing at me but yeah overall open book tour I, I loved definitely do again and well done to Carrie and her team for putting that show on it was very enjoyable very unique in the regards to the audience voting and it's something I look forward to seeing if she will do again in the coming years. So yeah, I'm going to leave this video here now and I will catch you guys again soon.